Hi there, and welcome to the Electronics Lab. The circuit that you see right here is an op-amp differentiator, and it's called this because it takes the input voltage and differentiates it over time to give the output voltage. The output is the derivative of the input. This kind of circuit is useful in a number of different situations. One common use for the differentiator is part of a PID controller, where PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative, PID. And for the purpose of this video, we are not going to go into how the circuit works, but basically it uses feedback to help a motor follow a speed reference. And within that feedback loop, it uses a number of analog circuits. Most relevant to this video is that it uses a differentiator to take the derivative of the feedback voltage. Essentially, differentiators are high pass filters and can be used for things like converting triangle waves into square waves. Remember that the derivative of a slope, like in a triangle wave, will give a constant value, like the peak of this square wave. It can also be used for detecting the edges of square waves, because square waves are never perfectly square. There's always going to be some rise times. So again, we're going to have a line here with a fairly steep slope, and when you take the derivative of that, you are going to get a spike at that slope. And you can use it for determining the rate of change of the edges of that square wave. Since, like I said, they are never exactly square, we can look at how quickly that square wave goes from a low value to a high value, use the output of that differentiation to get an idea of how quickly the square wave is changing. I should point out that building a practical differentiator is fairly challenging because the input is capacitive and therefore susceptible to high frequency noise. To compensate for this, there are a number of tricks to create a real differentiator. I will save that topic for another video, but when I show you the simulation here, you'll get some clues on how to do this compensation. Now let's jump into the analysis of the circuit to see why it is a differentiator. And again, for this analysis, we are going to assume that this op amp is ideal, which means no current goes into the inverting or non-inverting pins because the input impedance is infinite. The open loop voltage gain is infinite. So with the negative feedback of this circuit, the voltage at the inverting terminal and the voltage at the non-inverting terminal are the same. And we can also assume these other characteristics, but they don't have as much of an effect on the analysis that we're going to do. So we've got the differentiator here. And what we want to figure out is what the relationship between the output and the input are. So because no current flows into the inverting terminal, the current that's going through C1 here is going to be the same as the current going through this feedback resistor here. And the current through this feedback resistor is going to be the voltage across the resistor divided by its resistance. Since the inverting terminal is at the same voltage as the non-inverting terminal, the inverting terminal will be at virtual ground. So that means the voltage across that resistor is going to be zero minus V out. Divide that by the feedback resistor value gives you the feedback current. Now that's equal to the current through the capacitor. Current through a capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the rate of change of the voltage across the capacitance. The voltage across this capacitance is the same as V in, because again, the voltage at this node right here is zero. So we get negative V out over RFB is equal to C1 times the rate of change of the input voltage do a little bit of rearranging and we get V out is equal to negative RFB times CI times the rate of change of the input. And that right there is our equation relating the output to the input. Now let's do an example and then simulate it to check the results. So here's our differentiator circuit with the equation relating output and input. Let's say that the capacitor is a 0.01 microfarad capacitor and the resistor is a five kilo ohm resistor. And then let's say we apply this input signal here at V in. We've got this triangle wave with a period of 200 microseconds or 0.2 milliseconds. So that means that its frequency is five kilohertz. Now let's use the equation to figure out what V out will be. Well, we're gonna have to break this up into two parts because V in has two distinct parts to it. There's the rising edge of the triangle and then the falling edge of the triangle. Let's look at the increasing part, this rising edge part first. So we get V out, well, it's this equation, but if we plug in those numbers for RFB and CI, times the rate of change of the input voltage over time. So the input voltage is going from one volt, minus one volt up to one volt. So it's changing by two volts and it's changing by two volts over a hundred microseconds. So two volts over 100 microseconds gives us a rate of change of 20,000 volts per second. So if we have this 20,000 volts per second times this RC value, that's going to give you five times 10 to the minus five seconds, 
gives you minus one volt. So for this time period from zero to 100 microseconds, V out will be at minus one volt. The calculation for the falling part of the triangle or the decreasing part of the triangle is going to be the exact same. The R and the C values are the same. The only difference is that since it's going from one volt down to minus one volt, this value right there becomes a negative value. So you have a negative number times a negative number. V out for that time period will be plus one volt. So over time, from zero to 100 microseconds, V out will be at negative one volt. And then at 100 microseconds, it's going to change to 1 volt. And then it'll switch back to negative 1 for another 100 microseconds up to positive 1. The output is a square wave, as we expected, swinging between minus 1 and 1 volt, with the same frequency as the input. Now let's jump over to LT Spice to take a look at how this circuit runs in simulation. So here you can see I've got my differentiator built. I'm using a universal op amp, so it's an ideal op amp. And you can see I've created this pulse wave. And what this pulse looks like is it has an initial voltage of minus one volt, an on voltage of one volt, time delay to turn on is zero. The rise time is 0.1 milliseconds. So that's how long it takes to go from the bottom value to the top value. And the fall time is also 0.1 milliseconds, how long it takes to go from the higher value to the lower value. We're not gonna have it on for any length of time. So it's always gonna be either rising or falling. And the period is 0.2 milliseconds. So that means that this period of 0.2 milliseconds is made up of the time that it takes for it to get from the low value to the top value, and then from the top value to the low value. And that gives me a triangle wave. And you can see that triangle wave there. Now let's take a look at the output. And this is going to be kind of ugly. Remember how I said that these differentiators are susceptible to high frequency noise? Well, you can see the results of that right here. Lots of high frequency stuff going on. So I won't go into the details of how you pick values, but what you can do is add a capacitor across R1, and that will cause, that will create a kind of a short circuit for the high frequency signals. And you can also add a resistor at the input that will also act as a, a filter for the high frequency signal. In the simulation here, I can get away with just putting the compensation capacitor across R1. And the value of this capacitor can be fairly low. If I do 250 picoseconds, that's going to work. As I mentioned before, I will create another video to show you how you can figure out what compensation values to use to get rid of these high frequency components. So now I can re-simulate. I've got my square wave created from the input triangle wave. And that square wave has a lower value of minus one volt and an upper value of one volt, as I calculated by hand just a minute ago. So in this video, we have seen that an op-amp circuit can actually be used to do some calculus, and in this case, differentiation. I hope you now have a better understanding of how an op-amp differentiator circuit works. And if you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe and sign up for notifications. You can also check out my website, which has more op-amp circuits, as well as all sorts of content and practice problems related to electrical and electronic circuits. And you can find the link to that in the description. You know, it would be really nice to have a capacitor like this one for my boss at work because it provides a bypass for negative feedback. As always, thanks so much for watching. See you next time.